students today we will be starting second part of chapter resources and development we will be discussing resource planning in india it has three processes first one is identification and inventory of resources second is evolving a planning structure third is matching resource development plan with national development plans in order to make these three processes effective five year plan was introduced after india achieved independence for this availability of resources is a must condition next indian resource development depends on technology quality of human resources and historical experiences of people moving on to the next topic that is conservation of resources as we all know resources are important uh, for our development but human beings because of their selfish motives are using them irrationally which lead to socio economic and environmental problems gandhi ji was of the view that there is enough for everybody's need and not for anybody's greed greedy individuals and exploitative nature of modern technology is the root cause of their depletion gandhi ji was against mass production and he supported production of masses moving on to the next topic that is land resources the most important resource where all economic activities are done this is natural resource supporting natural vegetation wildlife etc now moving on to the relief features found on the land we find 27% land under plateaus 43% land under plains and 30% land under mountains next is land utilization this will include land under forest second barren and waste land which includes rocky desert areas land used for railway tracks and other purposes next one is permanent pastures and grazing lands next land under miscellaneous trees and cultivable waste land cultivable waste land means uncultivated land for more than 5 years next is fallow lands this is divided into two parts current fallow land uncultivated land for one or less than one year other than current fallow land which is not used for cultivation for one year or less than 5 year coming up to the net zone area area sown with crops but counted only once next is gross cropped area which includes area sown more than once in an agricultural year plus net zone area land use pattern in india this is determined by both physical and human factors in india we have total geographical area is 3.28 million square kilometer out of this we have only 93% area land use data available net zone area in india is about 54% this also varies from one state to another for example 80% net zone area is there in punjab and haryana whereas less than 10% in most of the northeastern state coming up to the forest percentage it is about 24% whereas uh, national forest policy was introduced in 1952 according to this 33% area should come under forest to maintain ecological balance in the environment next is land degradation meaning of land degradation is deterioration of soil now causes responsible for land de- degradation human activities like deforestation overgrazing mineral processing like cement industry industrial effluents mining sites are also abandoned now next topic is conservation of land resources for this afforestation should be encouraged proper management of grazing lands we should plant sh- uh, shelter bel- belts control on grazing and mining activities plus proper discharge and disposal of industrial effluents formation of soil living system which takes millions of years to form soil up to few centimeters now we will be discussing about the factors responsible for the formation of soil relief parent rock climate vegetation and time forces of nature like running water wind glacier they are also responsible for its formation activities of decomposers chemical and organic changes are also other factors classification of soil according to age alluvial soil is of two types khadar and bangar khadar is the new alluvial soil whereas bangar is the old alluvial soil khadar is more fertile as compared to bangar 
Kadar has fine articles whereas Bangar has conquered nodules in it. Kadar is found near the river, Bangar is found far away from river. Now let's discuss the import important points of alluvial soil. First is most important widely found and fertile soil. Next is near its source the soils are found in Piedmont plains and called as doers, coarse and therais formed of sand, silt and clay. This soil is suitable for growing sugarcane, paddy and wheat. These type of soils in drier areas are more alkaline, contains potash, phosphoric acid and lime. Areas where these soils are found northern plains, coastal plains, Rajasthan and Gujarat. Moving on to black soil known as regar soil. This soil is well known for their capacity to hold moisture. It is made up of clay material. These are sticky in nature, better plowed when wet, used for growing cotton, sugarcane, rich in calcium carbonate, potash and lime, but poor in phosphoric content. Areas Maharashtra, MP, Chhattisgarh, Gujarat. Next is red and yellow soils. These soils develop on crystalline igneous rocks in areas of low rainfall. They have red color due to diffusion of iron in crystalline and metamorphic rocks. Looks yellow when hydrated areas Odisha and Chhattisgarh. Moving on to laterite soil. Develops in area of high rainfall and high temperature. Result of intense leaching due to heavy rain. Human con content is very low in these type of soils. Suitable for cultivation with manure and fertilizers. Uh, tea and coffee can be grown in such type of soil areas Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu. Arid soils range from red to brown, sandy in texture and saline in nature. Due to dry climate, high temperature, evaporation is faster and soil lacks humus and moisture. Conquer in lower horizons can be seen. After proper irrigation, this soil can be used for cultivation purposes. Next is forest soil. These soils are found in hilly areas. Soil texture varies according to mountains, loamy and silty in valley sides and coarse grain in the upper slopes. These soils experience denudation and are acidic with low humus content in snow covered areas of Himalayas. Soil erosion. This means removal of soil cover causes for soil erosion. Human activities like deforestation, overgrazing, construction and mining activities are responsible. Natural forces like wind, water, glacier lead to soil erosion. Defective method of farming, flowing in wrong manner is also one of the factor. Moving on to the soil conservation, flowing along contour lines, steps can be cut on slopes, strips of grass are left to grow between crops, planting lines of trees to create shelter against sand deposits. Next is uh, difference between gullies and badland. Gullies means the running water cuts through the clay soil and makes deep channels whereas bad land means unfit land for cultivation. Ravines means bad land in Chambal Basin are also called ravines. Thank you and have a nice day.